light of the world. We light this candle as a sign that Jesus Christ has come and Christ will come again. As the light pushes back the darkness, let us walk with, learn from, and worship the light that is Jesus. sits at his right hand and by the grace of the Holy Spirit I greet each and every one of you on this Mother's Day not only with a smile to say God loves you but with a smile to say I can't wait until we worship together again welcome welcome Johnson, Tracy Johnson, Annette Calhoun, Sabrina Beecham, Miss Young, Roshonda, and Marlene, and myself later on. Uh, my prayer is for the world. It's for all the people who are going through this uh, pandemic. My son's father is in the hospital. He has the virus and they rushed him to the hospital. My prayer is for him. And my prayer is for Miss Betty Johnson, uh, whose friend Luis Fluca passed uh, a couple of days ago. I'm asking God to uh, lift her up and make her grief short. Uh, my prayer is for Reverend Tony's uh, sister, Alberta Molag. Miss Van's niece has cancer. My prayers for her. Uh, the niece is Artie D. Young, Davis Walker, brother uh, Raymond, and for the young people who are out of school. And I'm asking God to just wrap his arms around all of us, and especially the young people who has a whole lot of time on their hands and really don't know what to do with it. So I'm asking God to cover them with his blood. Build a fence around them. Give them peace at being shut in because I know it's hard for me and it must be even harder for them. I'm asking God to uh, go to the White House, touch our president, touch those who are in charge of uh, this thing with keeping us safe. Father, go to the hospitals. Touch those who are hurting and grieving and feeling bad about themselves. Father, give them peace. I'm asking you to go to the prisons. Touch them right now, Father. Touch the one that's guarding them and keeping them there. I'm praying that they are safe and they, they are being kept safe. Father, I'm asking you to uh, just watch over our community, yes. our uh, people who are out there without homes, Father. I pray that they find a home and they're taken care of because we see them every day in tents and 
different places, just lagging in the street. I know that you are a just God. Yes. So, Father, we ask in you right now to watch over them, cover them with your blood. And those people who are in charge of them, Father, I'm asking you to touch their hearts yes. and let them know that those people matter too. We're asking you to just rain down your mercies and keep all of us safe, Father. I thank you. We love and adore you. In your son Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We come this morning just to lift up the name of the Lord. For God is so worthy to be praised this morning. And I just want to send a praise out for all the mothers. For we all have a reason to celebrate because we're all born of a mother. Yes. Can someone just say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, no. 
Amen. Good morning, Rosen Christian Reformed Church. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. Uh, just want to let you know that when we're recording this, uh, Miss Watts and Megan, uh, Glenn, Pastor Glenn, when David is singing, we're all humming along and clapping along and singing uh, oh. outside uh, in the front, and we can't wait to the day when we're able to do that together again. Uh, we miss you and look forward to being able to worship together. Um, and every time Miss Watts has come in, she said, I miss it here so much, I can't wait uh, when we're all together again. So we look forward to that day, and that day is coming soon. Again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Uh, you heard this already in the prayer, uh, but uh, we send a special prayer to uh, Butch Fluker and uh, Luis Baylard Fluker's family. Uh, right now to Miss Johnson, who's a good friend. Uh, Miss Miss Fluker passed away uh, on Wednesday, and so we lift up her family in prayer uh, at this time. And if you can, reach out to Butch as well and let him know uh, that you care about him and that uh, you're there for him in this loss. The word today comes from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Hear the word of God. This is Jesus speaking. He says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we say that we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth. And the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. Yes. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak by my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. It's the word of God. Thanks be to God. My youngest son, Ryan, five years old at the time, he's seven now, was using his fork like a rake. He was pushing and pulling his food around his dinner plate, moving his vegetables to one side, moving the mashed potatoes to the other. He finally moved all the vegetables to one side and he lifted up a bread roll and he put the bread roll on top of the beans and the carrots and tried to sort of hide the beans and the carrots under the bread. Ryan, like many children before him, and I would imagine many children after him, goes to great lengths to avoid eating his vegetables. But finally he looked up from the plate, and looked in my eyes, and said, Dad, what does God look like? Now this could have been a crafty attempt to lure me into a lengthy conversation to avoid eating those vegetables. Or... Maybe it was a mixture of vegetable avoidance and curiosity about God. What does God look like? Maybe you've had similar questions. Maybe the question wasn't, what does God look like? Maybe your question was more of a cry to God. Why? God, would you let this happen? I've heard some of us utter those words. Where are you, God? Why, God? Where are you? Is God in the middle of this? A young mother with cancer recently asked. On the night before Jesus would be crucified, 
Philip looks up from the table and says to Jesus, show us the Father. That'll be enough for us. In other words, Philip asks Jesus, what does God look like? Now, I don't think Philip was just avoiding eating his vegetables either. From Philip at the Last Supper to Ryan at the family dinner table and all of us in between, there is under those questions some sincere desire, some a sincere desire for a measure of reassurance that all the stories about God and God's love are real. I don't think that it's weakness or lack of faith. In some ways, it's wanting that faith that has been handed down by story to be enfleshed, to be incarnate, to be real. Philip asked Jesus, show us the Father. One pastor writes, John doesn't record this, but I suspect that there is a collective gasp on the part of the other disciples when Philip asks this hard question. In ancient Israel, you see, it was simply understood that no one can see God and live. Mm -hmm. Moses, the model of faith in the Old Testament, once made a similar request, and God put him face forward in the crack of a mountain and passed by, and all Moses could see was the glory of the Lord shimmering around him. He was finally around, uh, allowed to turn around and look only after God had passed by so that Moses ultimately saw only the trail of the Lord's glory. Or more literally in Hebrew, Moses could only see God's backside. You see, God is too much for us to bear, too holy, too powerful, too infinite, too full of potential, too full of life, and too full of the future for any mere mortal to behold and live. And yet Philip asked Jesus to see God anyway. If you want us to trust you, Jesus, show us the Father. That is, what does Jesus, sorry, what does God look like? Fifteen years ago, I was living in Holland, Michigan, maybe 16, 17 years ago. I made some new friends. I was going to seminary. I made some new friends. And one weekend, my brother came up to visit me. He was in town, hung out with uh, me and these new friends for the weekend, and my brother and I were sitting around the table telling stories about my dad. Funny stories. My dad's a funny guy. And so we're telling funny stories when one of my new friends, didn't know my, my family, didn't grow up where I grew up, chimed in and said, man, I'd love to meet your dad. To which my brother said, you already have. If you've met Joe, then you've met our dad. Philip says, show us the Father. And Jesus responds in verse 9, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father, Jesus says to the disciples. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words I say to you, I don't speak on my authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. You see, if we want to see God the Father, we have to look to Jesus. A pastor, Michael Reminger, from Richmond, Virginia, writes it this way, If we want to see God the Father, pay attention to Jesus in the Gospels. You want to know what God looks like? He looks like his son, humble enough to be born in a barn. He looks like his son, gentle enough to embrace children. You want to know what God looks like? He looks like his son, compassionate enough to hold the hands of the sick. You want to know what God looks like? He looks like his son, strong enough to lift up the lowly. You want to know what God looks like? Look at his son, generous enough to die on a cross. You want to know what God looks like? Look at his son, victorious enough to rise from the dead. That's what God looks like. He looks like his son, Jesus. Do you want to know what God sounds like? He sounds like his son. His son who said, blessed are the peacemakers. You want to know what God sounds like? He sounds like his son who says, if you're angry, you're as guilty as a murderer. You want to know what God looks like, sounds like? He sounds like his son who says, forgive 70 times seven. 
You want to know what God sounds like? He sounds like his son, son who says your sins are forgiven. You want to know what God sounds like? He sounds like his son who says, when I was hungry, you fed me. That's what God sounds like. He sounds like his son, Jesus. You want to know how God acts? He acts like his son, his son who fed the multitudes. You, you want to know what God is up to and how God acts? Look to his son who calmed the storm, didn't arouse the storm. You, you want to know what God acts like? Look to his son who heals the sick. Look to his son who speaks the truth. That's how God acts, like his son, Jesus. People of God, if you want to see God, you have to look to Jesus. From father to son, there is a family resemblance. And for us, you and I, we also bear a family resemblance to Jesus and to God the Father. By the Holy Spirit working in us and in faith communities that we are a part of, we should bear that family resemblance as well. And when someone would say, oh, I'd love to meet God, we should be able to point and say, oh, you already have, by the way that followers of Jesus Christ have treated and lived and embodied faith. I've heard people ask in the middle of the coronavirus, where is God in the middle of all this? Early on in the coronavirus, we certainly saw some of the worst in people. Hoarding, stockpiling, people buying up supplies, leaving others with none. But as each day has passed, more and more and more, we may be witnessing to what God is doing by what God's people are doing. Every single weekday, Monday through Friday, since the coronavirus has taken hold, members of Calvary Church in Orland Park have driven to the far, from the far south suburbs to our front doors to supply meals. Every single day since the virus has started, Monday through Friday, they have brought pans of food. They come like clockwork, dropping off the pans. They never ask for anything. They just ring the bell. They come needing nothing. Sometimes they don't even make the food. They cater it and have it sent in to feed the homeless. You want to know what God looks like? I think God looks like that. Every Wednesday since this pandemic, DeWitt Casey, Lavelle Rice, and a volunteer named Katie Bastardi, they pack all the food boxes for the food pantry. And on Thursday, the same three people with uh, the help of Keisha and Sandy and myself, but it's mainly those three. Uh, they come, they pack the boxes, then they give them out. What was a job for 12 people has become a job for three or four people. They spend hours every week doing it. No extra pay, no big pat on the back, no big plaque. They work and they serve others. You want to know what God looks like? Look to his son and look to those who gather and worship his son. Monday through Friday, Miss Taylor, who runs the meal program, makes coffee, sets out snacks, feeds folks, and people come to the cast iron gates, some who have schizophrenia, some who wrestle with mental illness, um, some who are hungry, some who are addicted, some who are afflicted, but they come to the gates and she reaches her little skinny arm through the gate and hands them coffee, hands them snacks, makes sure that they are all fed every single day. Every Thursday, Steve Turner and Will Gordon show up. They pack the, their vehicle full of food boxes and masks, and they bring them to seniors in the neighborhood and to shut-ins. Where is God in the middle of this? What does God look like? I think God looks like that, emptying ourselves to serve others. Where is God in the middle of this? Maybe God's people following Jesus, emptying themselves for the good of others, for the good of community, that's where God is in the middle of this. Wherever an act of selfless love for neighbor occurs in Jesus' name, that's where God is. In John 14, Philip asks to see God the Father. And Jesus says, when you see me, you see the Father. You know, I think it's important to note that that conversation happens, that we read earlier. That conversation happens not on any ordinary night, that conversation is happening on the night before Jesus would be betrayed, 
would be abandoned, would be crucified, beaten, and killed. And so if you want to see God, if you want to know where God is, look to Jesus, look to the cross, the ultimate picture of giving of self for others. Pastor David Luce writes, Why did Jesus go to the cross? To appease the righteous of an angry God? To set for us some kind of example of what real faith looks like? To take the punishment we deserve? Jesus goes to the cross for one reason and one reason only. To show us God. To show us God's grace and mercy. To show just how much God loves us. And how far God will go to communicate that love to us that we might believe, and believing, have life in his name. People of God, some of us are tired, some of us are anxious, some of us are scared, some of us feel like we're at the end of our rope, some of us are wrestling and struggling. Where is God in the middle of this? Look to the cross. At the cross is perfect love. At the cross, we have been shown what God looks like. At the cross is Jesus. Amen. I want to invite Brother David Walker up to lead us in song. People of God, Wherever you are, I want you to know that God is yet still with us. And now with Mother's Day upon us, let us always look to each other and love on one another in the mighty name of Jesus. That's something that we would always do if we would meet together. But we're going to do that today anyway. So if you're at home and there's someone around you, could you look at them right now? And if you find yourself all alone, I want you to look right at the television and look right at me. Look at your phones. Look at your devices. And say, in the name of Jesus, I love you. Because Jesus first loved me. Now whoever you just told that to, could you give them a hug right now in the mighty name of Jesus? Amen. Amen. Wherever you are, wherever you've been going through, God said, the struggle.
Mother's Day to all of you mothers. Uh, we love you. We're grateful for you. Grateful for all the ways that you lead. Grateful for all the ways that you serve uh, as well. Hey, wanted to show you this. We've got uh, Extra Masks, uh, a nonprofit started by a young woman who came and volunteered here about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, she works on Jewelers Row and um, had some access to materials and some connections. So she started making masks and uh, they started, they started uh, having them made and sent them out. And so we've got several hundred of these and we want to make sure they get in the hands of people. We'll give them out at food pantry, but also if you need some, do not hesitate to reach out and we will make sure we get them to you. The organization is called Masks for Shy. And uh, you can learn more about the organization as well uh, when you get your masks. This coming Thursday night, 7 o'clock, uh, get on Facebook Live, RCM's page. We are doing our virtual banquet. We've got several videos that we've been shooting. Uh, Brother David's going to lead a couple songs. I'm going to speak about what's happening at RCM as well as we've talked for a while about a building project that we're going to do. We still have uh, every intention to uh, complete that building project, that renovation. So. Uh, we're moving forward. We've been talking with the builders, and we want to talk about those things as well on that night, as well as our response uh, the last two months and a half to, to the coronavirus and how uh, our ministry has been impacted and how we responded. So uh, tune in, Facebook Live, Thursday night, 7 o'clock. Uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Again, to the fluker Baylog family, uh, may God's peace be with you. Hear this final parting blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God turn his face towards you. May God give his peace to you. May he turn towards you and give you his peace, both now and forevermore. Amen.